Welcome to the Legal 2 podcast, presented by LawyerLocate.ca. Join us as we explore the latest trends, strategies, and tools for promoting your legal practice in the digital age. Hosted by Mark Robbins, CEO of LawyerLocate.ca, LegalTube, and Digital M-Space, where we're all about legal marketing online for Canadian lawyers. Let's dive in. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, season yeah. one, episode two of LegalTube podcast. We're happy to have as our guest today, uh, Kingston uh, area paralegal, uh, Mark Carty, who uh, practices in most of Southern Ontario and tells me as far west as London. Mark, welcome to the show. Yeah, Mark, uh, great name, you know, good solid strong first name there, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me to the show. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. That's great. So, you know, the premise of our show, uh, Legal Tube the podcast is we we talk about all things legal marketing. We we try and talk about that one vertical that's uh, that we're involved with. Uh, obviously, the to to keep things transparent, we're uh, we're produced by LawyerLocate.ca. It's a national online legal referral service that's been around for over twenty two years now. Uh, we also have uh, DigitalMSpace.ca involved in our show, and of course LegalTube.ca. So they're all we're all one big happy family, but. So in the paralegal world, uh, this is a relatively new thing in the sense of Ontario kind of led the way into licensing paralegals. Prior to that, paralegals were just more or less glorified clerks in law firms, right? That's that's correct. Yeah, we only uh, got standing oh maybe a little over 15 or 16 years ago. I, I can't confirm the exact number, but basically, right. yes, it was uh, paper pushers for the most part. It was law clerks. It was answering the phone. It was prepping files, a lot of the paperwork behind the scenes, but uh, no in-court legal representation. So in Ontario, there was always been uniqueness about the province of Ontario. I know when Lawyer Locate started 22 years ago, it was literally the first year that in Ontario, lawyers were allowed to advertise outside of the Yellow Pages. And because for the longest time, that was all they were allowed to do. They could not do television. They could not do radio. They could not do traditional print advertising. Uh, were there any restrictions originally when paralegals came out on their what they would be allowed to do for marketing? From a marketing standpoint, it always follows essentially what the lawyers can and cannot do as well. The the regulator, the Law Society of Ontario governs both of us. Obviously, lawyers have had standing uh, far longer in Ontario than paralegals have, uh, but we are governed by a specific uh, paralegal rules of conduct for Ontario. Uh, there's bylaws with respect to what can and cannot be published. Uh, we can't necessarily say that we specialize or we're experts because it's it's kind of a netty no-no, so to speak. Um, even though we might have a you know ten plus years experience or fifteen plus years experience dealing with just you know highway traffic act charges, that's a lot of time. Uh, day in day out to be dedicating uh, to one particular field but by no means would I be able to call myself an expert so that's um, that's kind of the rules with marketing it, it's it's still very traditionalized in the sense that you know 50 years ago there wasn't any any online marketing for lawyers it was mostly <clears throat> excuse me word of mouth or or just being in court at the right place and right time and, and having a, a prospective client see you in court um but now you know 50 years ago that was the old traditional way and, and law is very old school very old timey uh and lawyers uh even still today don't utilize a lot of the legal marketing services that are available to them. And specifically paralegals definitely don't utilize the legal marketing. It's a completely different ball game now. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but we, yeah, we have to be, we have to be careful with what we publish just because we have to be careful with the terminology we use. Uh, you might be able to tiptoe around it using a synonym, but ultimately you can't make yourself out to be better than any, other paralegal or any other lawyer in Ontario. And that's one of the principal uh, uh, rules is that we are not more superior to anyone else. We're, we're roughly one in the same, you know, we understand the law. We may apply it differently, um, but we can't hold ourselves out to be more superior. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people steer away from legal marketing online is they don't know what to publish. Right. And you touched on an interesting uh, experience 
when we talked about restrictions, because when Lawyer Locate started 22 years ago, we were the first, and to this date, we're the only service uh, globally that offers the uh, the robust legal directory with the huge profile pages and the uh, pre-screened qualified referrals, as well as the backlinking, and then a whole bunch of the the technical stuff to help uh, you know help our members with their own websites to get more traffic uh, using an organic approach uh, because of all of our years and our brand uh, reputation. But the reason Lawyer Locate for 21 years never offered paralegal space. They We were asked several times over the years, paralegals that would see us at different legal shows. I would do the, uh, the, the Ontario Bar show every year in Toronto for a long time. And we'd get uh, paralegals approaching us saying, well, we'd like to get on your service. We'd like a benefit. Well, the problem we had was not so much restriction by rule. It was restriction by lawyers. At that time, lawyers didn't want any paralegals anywhere near any of their advertising. They were very fearful of it and they did not then with lawyer locate in particular, we, we were told by many members that if we were contemplating bringing paralegals in that they would leave. So we sat back and we looked at it at, the, at that time, we didn't really see that there was a huge marketing opportunity there for, for us. That's changed. We opened it up to paralegals to get the exact same services that we provide to lawyers. So there's no paring down of the service. Uh, it's very robust. Uh, you get the the profile page that you can now, because videos become such an important aspect of all marketing today. So we have opportunities for you to put your videos there. If you've done YouTubes, you've done shorts, you've done TikToks, whatever platform you're using, Instagram, they can all be on your, your profile page. Uh, as I say, it's it, more and more, it's a mini website. It's not just a profile page. It's not a business card. So there's a ton of information that you could put out there for the general public that's looking for a paralegal and looking for your help. That said, you recently became a member of lawyerlocate.ca as a paralegal. Uh, do you want to share what your experiences have been so far with uh, with your membership? Yeah, I, I'm going to go back a little bit because, you know, we're talking about how long Lawyer Locate has been around for, you know, it's the 22nd year, which is fantastic. And just as you were saying that, I, I was thinking about how long I've known you and the team for you and Natalie at Digital M Space and Rebecca. And I started working in the legal industry specifically, you know, as a paralegal student, uh, you know, managing the file room in the basement. Uh, but then I started working on the website for the lawyer and I actually met you about, I think it was September 2013. So it's been a, just over 10 years and I couldn't believe that that much time has gone by. So <laughs> again, you know, thank, I just wanted to point that out that I can't believe how much time you guys have been in, um, in business for. It's fantastic. You know, keep going. But yes, no, I, I, I love the page. The Lawyer Locate page recently uh, has been set up for me and it's all about credibility. I mean, it's one thing for me to set up my own website and tell you about how good I am. It's another thing to have a credible third party um, regurgitate or share the same bits of information or generate leads another way back to the website and ultimately to, to calling me. And it's, it's nice that I have another static page that I can make updates to regularly uh, or as, you know, non-regularly as or irregularly, I guess is the proper terminology um, as I want to, but it, it, it's a static page. It's not something that I have to be so actively engaged. If it's not me picking up the phone and making cold calls, it's not me, you know, walking door to door to, to give out business cards, the old fashioned and traditional way. It's another static page for people to find me uh, and to send them to me. And I don't have to do a lot of the work. Lawyerlocate.ca has done a lot of that work, setting up that fantastic page. And all I'd have to do now is share it through my social media pages to just drive traffic, not only to Lawyer Locate, but ultimately back to my business. Uh, and I've seen uh, some pretty decent results so far. Uh, I haven't gone into the exact analytics, but obviously it is there on the back end. And that's just me being busy over the last couple of months with some trials generated, obviously, from Lawyer Locate and, and their online presence, obviously, sending referrals to me. Um, you, you touched upon, um, you know, when paralegals first got standing and lawyers not really knowing how to, how to market paralegals. And a lot of the time paralegals do work for lawyers. Don't get me wrong. You know, maybe 50 or 60% of 
paralegals go and work for another firm or or some of us start our own firms and we have to deal with the marketing and and the managing uh, of that. Uh, I think there's still a big, big boys table, uh, so to speak. There's still this little bit of division between lawyers and paralegals, unfortunately. Um, And, and just dealing with something specifically, Mark, uh, a lot of the local directories uh, that, we can pay for and sign up for when you actually get down to the uh, classification of services uh, that your business offers, it usually only says lawyer or it says law firm or legal practice. Well, paralegals don't operate practices. We, uh, we provide legal services through a business. Uh, We're not a law firm by any means, according to proper terminology. Um, and we're not a lawyer, so I can't make a public directory page. And and the only drop down category that might be available to me on this public uh, public uh, directory is lawyer. And so, in cases where I've signed up for a um, one of these free directories, um, I've had to put to market myself, clicking the lawyer box because there was no legal service provider, there was no paralegal box, there was no. Uh, you know, legal service, uh, there's no law firms technically. The only legal sector that's available on some of those those websites is lawyer. And so there was one page that I set up and within a week I had a local lawyer, well, I shouldn't say local, there was a lawyer from the greater Toronto area that somehow came across my local Kingston directory page uh, and, and said that if I didn't remove the lawyer designation from the services offered, that I would be reported to the Law Society. Well, it came down the same day. But I, I emailed the, the directory uh, listing and I said, look, I'm a paralegal. I can't say I'm a lawyer, but I can't say that I'm anything else. What can be done? And I never heard back. But then you, now you mm-hmm. have a place like Lawyer Locate where both lawyers can go and paralegals can go and have that separation and the distinction. I mean, there's a there's a lot of what we do is similar and a lot of what we do is, is completely different. Uh, lawyers focus on a lot of the more aggravating cases in the criminal courts. Uh, paralegals don't have much standing in family law. Um, And we don't deal with any matters in the Superior Court of Justice, but we uh, are where we we make the most um, or spend the most time and put the most effort into matters like the Provincial Offenses Act or Provincial Offenses and Landlord and Tenant Board. These are areas that lawyers aren't going to spend the time a learning because they haven't dealt with it and be spending the time to navigate the actual process, the, you know, the filing, the waiting periods, the service periods, similar to what they do in major cases. Um, But they're not going to learn that. They're not going to take the time to deal with these minor traffic tickets. So this is the area where paralegals need to enter the market. They need to get online. They need to use lawyer locate to say, Hey, lawyers are great. Paralegals are just as great. And we're here too. We have standing. And like you said, Lawyer Locate's the only place so far uh, over online directory or calendar-wide directory um, and the other stuff that you provide as well. It's the only place that incorporates paralegals as their own kind of designation and standing. And it feels pretty good, Mark. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, the beauty beauty of the way Lawyer Locate was designed, uh, the founder, Natalie Waddell, 22 years ago, was it was always designed specifically for individual lawyers, not firms. The she recognized uh, then that the the days of the big, huge honking firms were coming to an end. And what was becoming more popular were small boutique firms, small LLPs and sole proprietors. And that has turned out to be true. You know, when you see McCarthy Tetro sell off its whole family law division, uh, a lot of the bigger firms have broken up or have just disappeared. Um, and when we come around to the paralegals and, and that engagement, when, you know, the decision was made to bring paralegals into lawyerlocate.ca, we did feel that there had to be a designator for the general public. So on the paralegals profile pages, there'll be paralegal written generally. I think it's just below lower right below the, the, uh, your image. Um, but the other nice thing about the way lawyer locate is built out is that we're distributing on the referral side, we're distributing based on geographic area and area of law. And it's going out to the lawyer or paralegal blind, meaning the client does not know. The client knows that it's going to multiples because that's what we're selling to the the public is that, hey, we'll connect you with more than one lawyer so you can find the lawyer or paralegal that's the right fit for you, whether that be emotionally, financially, or many other aspects. Um, So, but when you get it as a paralegal, or if you get it as a lawyer, the referral, 
you have an option. You, if you want the client, it's like any other business lead, jump on it, get a hold of them right away. If you're too busy, it doesn't fit your categories, press delete. Unlike the Law Society of Ontario, there's no reporting. We, we don't expect you to do any reporting whatsoever. And, and that's the advantage for, especially for paralegals, but the extra advantage for a paralegal on Lawyer Locate that's beyond what lawyers get is lawyers go looking now, as you pointed out, for a paralegal. Well, now they've got another source to go looking. And our member lawyers, we we're all distributed when we announced that we were going to open up to, to uh, because we wanted to let the existing membership know that we were doing this. But I, I did it and framed it the same way, saying, hey, now the directory works two ways. One is for you to get business, but if you're looking for a paralegal, look no further than your own directory. It's, it, I know, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Why has it taken so long? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. There's, <laughs> there's, there's things in the background. I understand there's bureaucracy in this and that, but uh, no, just kind of talking about the referrals is it, ironically enough, I, I had a referral within the last probably oh, seven to 10 business days um, from a gentleman that I ended up following up with, but simultaneously after I got the lawyer locate uh, notification, uh, somehow the individual found my website in Kingston, and I think it was for a GTA uh, related matter. Uh, but again, I, I go all over the place. I, I used to uh, say that I'd only want to stay in Kingston and, and Napanee because they're so close geographically that, you know, I just want to be the best Kingston and Napanee paralegal. Well, there's a lot of paralegals coming through the school. There's a lot uh, of, of uh, newly licensed paralegals, and, and you always have to evolve and expand. And I think the pandemic was the biggest uh, eye opener for me and, and just kind of touching, cause this does touch on your lawyers using lawyer to locate to, to find a paralegal before, um, before the pandemic, a lot of paralegals in Ontario, um, would support a lot of their income you being used as a in-court, uh, agent on behalf of another lawyer. Right. Uh, so for example, um, let's say I was in, you know, Kingston, Ontario court, you know, on a Tuesday, uh, sorry, I, I should say it's be factual on a Thursday when they normally sit, but let's say there's some lawyers from Toronto that have cases in Kingston, but they don't want to drive to Kingston to address it. So I was, I was adjourning on behalf of, of Toronto lawyers, their Kingston cases, you know, and I was having, you know, anywhere from three to five cases a day, almost every day of the week. And those weren't my personal clients. The lawyers were my clients because I'm assisting them with their client files and simply adjourning matters. Um, and paralegals don't have that now because we've gone on to Zoom. Why would you pay somebody $75 or $100 or whatever the dollar value will be to appear in court as your agent when now you can do what we're doing and just turn on Zoom and attend court via Zoom? So paralegals need to evolve. They need to actually really consider the, uh, you know, making we're giving up the old traditional word of mouth. And it's always the best referral, obviously, is word of mouth. But if you're relying in 2023, going into 2024 on word of mouth only, you're not going to succeed. We're not getting the same referrals to support that income. So we need to expand online. We need to find our own clients. And how do you do that? You do that by online legal marketing, which hasn't really been... Um, uh, an area that paralegals focus on. Too many paralegals right out of school say, okay, you know what, we're going to put up a website, make some business cards, and we're going to roll in the dough. Well, unfor I, it's, that's not how it works. Uh, you no, know, you have to... Go ahead. Yeah, you have to spend... Yeah, and Mark, I, it's on. funny you touch on this because I, 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 it's going to end up... Everybody, if you watch my first episode, you're going to hear this conversation come up again and again and again and again. So if you've heard it before, just bear with me and I'll try to make it as interesting as I possibly can. But you, you make a very valid point. I gave a talk... Oh, I want to say 15 years ago uh, at U University of Ottawa, it's a law school. Um, one of my uh, friends uh, and was at the time uh, a member of Lawyer Located asked me to come and do it because he shared my, my thoughts on this. And one of the things I've said in a very cut dry way, lawyers are great at practicing the law. They're terrible businessmen. They are the worst. I've, I've argued many times, and in that talk, I said, you know, the law societies and the universities are doing you a disservice if they don't make a business minor 
an absolute part of your law degree. They, they don't do it and they have to. If I told you how many lawyers that I've dealt with in my 30 years as a private investigator, for example, who just did not have a clue on how to run an office, never mind how to advertise and how to budget for doing that. And today it's still there. You Like you said, there are still some old stuffy firms. You're not putting me on that interweb. Uh, you know, and it's it's funny when I hear it, but now I look at the paralegals and I'm starting to get the same vibe from the paralegals that they don't get it. It isn't hang your shingle, they will come. It is you are in a highly competitive service-based industry that everybody else out there wants that same client. So if you're not making steps to market yourself on all areas that are available to you, whether it's a lawyerlocate.ca, whether you you create a podcast, which I recommend to all of my clients. Uh, it's nothing to do a little small po- podcast and throw it up on YouTube shorts and throw it up on TikTok. You'd be surprised the traction that gets. Uh, you know, you don't have to be like these big YouTubers like Mr. Beast and have, you know, 20 million people subscribing to your podcast. It's I, I told one of my clients, Stuart Rudner, who has a show called Fire Away. It's an employment law show. Yeah. So when we first couple of years of doing it, he uh, you know, was looking at the metrics because we, we shoot those shows live deliberately because it's just a feel I like to get from it. It's not about getting a live audience. It's about how we do the show. So we started asking about, you know, well, how many viewers? And he said, I noticed we only had like 10 viewers. I said, yeah, 10 viewers from the Markham area. Where did you want your viewership from? I can deliver. There's ways of, I can deliver you 100,000 viewers from China. I can deliver you a quarter of a million viewers from South America. It's done all the time. Is that what you want? Or you think any one of those is going to turn into a client? No. So our job for all of our, our services is to market our clients to the geographic area that they want to market in. And that's why in lawyerlocate.ca, when you sign up, you have control over what jurisdictions you'll accept referrals from. That isn't necessarily put as public. We have two. Is it, what will you accept and then what do you want the public to know? So you can put that out there in, in that. But coming back to the lawyers and, and not me, you know, this is why I think I want to do these podcasts is to try hopefully to get the word out that there are alternatives. If it's not lawyerlocate.ca, there's lots of other marketing things that you should be doing as a paralegal or as a lawyer to promote your practice because or your business, because it is a business. And I, too, don't like the word practice. It's a business. You're in a service-based professional industry. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I look at what's going on, I've joined, since we did the paralegals, I've joined a bunch of the uh, Ontario uh, Facebook pages for paralegals, for the most part, pretty nice people. They allow me to put stuff up about Lawyer Locate with it, not you know, no pushback from the admins. Um, not seeing a whole lot come back. I've had a few, oh, I really like your comment or I really like that Lawyer Locate's out there. I know you have some associates that you're you're going to be hopefully sending our sending them our way so we can help build their practices. But something that's just popped into my mind, Mark, we have Ontario licensed. What other provinces currently in in Canada are licensing paralegals? That's part A of my question, and then part B is I don't believe Alberta is one of them, but we have a robust paralegal group in in the province of Alberta. Yes. So to answer part A, Ontario is the only province in Canada that regulates uh, paralegals so that we actually hold uh, a P1 license card uh, to provide legal services to the public. Uh, However, British Columbia, I'm pretty sure it's British Columbia, uh, recently I want to say recently, but time is flying. It's already December. recently actually uh, allowed paralegals in good standing here in Ontario to fill out an application um, with respect to the scope of our practice uh, to potentially become fully licensed paralegals in British Columbia. Now, I don't know exactly Hmm. where that stands. Um, I haven't filled out an application 
Um, but I do have uh, several colleagues that I, I think they're just waiting to hear the final result. Uh, but they they filled out a, a rather uh, rigorous application uh, dealing with the scope of what we do on a daily basis. I think it's a combination of practical law uh, as well as the business side. Uh, and so I could see British Columbia expanding to have the access to justice and allowing uh, the the difference between a, a, a licensed lawyer and a licensed paralegal in, in British Columbia. It'd be great if Alberta, uh, you know, followed suit and expanded because I was born in Alberta. I was born in Calgary and uh, moved before I was two years old. I'd love to come back and, and practice or sorry, I shouldn't say that. I would love to come and provide legal services in Alberta if I ever uh, was allowed the opportunity legally to do so, of course. Uh, the, the one thing I just wanted to mention, Mark, is a lot of the par- you mentioned that you're in you're now in the paralegal groups and you're not getting a lot of the feedback. You're not getting a lot of people, you know, asking about what else can lawyer locate do for me. And the biggest thing I find, and I have a lot of friends in the paralegal profession, but not a lot of those friends take advantage of video marketing and putting up a YouTube page. Now, I'm preaching to the wrong choir. I haven't yet done, but you can confirm that at my the previous law firm I was employed by, I, yeah. I was uh, pretty involved in the online video and legal marketing uh, community. And, and I want to expand that, just finding the time. But people don't like being filmed and people don't like, or I shouldn't say this, this is a generalization, this is speculation. But from my experience talking to my friends and other paralegals is they don't want to be filmed on video or appear on camera in case they look silly. But what they don't realize is that every single day they're on video with the general public watching with 300 people sitting in Zoom court and they're on video. Right. So I, I don't know how it's any different. It's well, they used to, it used to, just let me well, last little point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used, to, used to be different when you know if you didn't like public speaking and you got into the paralegal profession. Why I don't know how, um, but the thing that you could you could always take with you when you went in for your submissions is that you always had your back to the general public. You're only talking to the justice of the peace in those settings, and you tend to forget who's behind you. And so on video, it's it's no different. They, they're they on video every day. You know, we're not, nobody's supposed to record, but you can't control what the public do. Uh, it's it's a criminal offense to record, obviously, court proceedings, but they're, they're on video. They're trying to sell themselves, looking good in a suit to try to get more clients. But why are they only restricting themselves to the zoom court proceeding why aren't they setting up a, a page on lawyerlocate.ca to regurgitate some of the videos that they can record uh themselves on their cell phone it takes 10 minutes i mean i i'm, I'm bad at it i haven't done any of the videos yet but it is on the uh the chopping block for marketing in 2024 uh and just utilizing lawyer locate but that's just my two senses nobody wants to be on film i don't know if they don't think they look good but they forget that they're on film every single day talking to uh, ontario court judges and justices of the peace well, you know what? I do find it's really odd that that's, especially today with ChatGPT and all the AIs out there where you literally can type out your script, what you want to say. No, I don't want to be on camera. I'll use an avatar. Okay. Uh, I'll do it in a cartoon type drawing method. There's so many options. If you don't want your face on there, but you want the message and you want the video, so you're getting the video content on all these platforms that are so hugely popular. I mean, I had no idea how huge TikTok was and is until I got involved. And it was because of Stuart Rudner that we said, well, we're everywhere else. Let's let's dive in and see what happens. And it was the best thing we ever did. It, you know, and this is the and that begat uh shorts and that begat reels on Facebook, all competing with TikTok because then it went from the well, you shouldn't do much more than a half hour, 45 minute video. That went to, well, two minutes or less, right? Because that's what the market is. And that's the attention span, sadly, of most people on, on digital me- media. You know, it goes back to the, your former employer where you were in charge of their social media. You were in charge of a lot of their marketing. And when I first got involved with that firm, uh, they were still doing huge blog, legal blog posts, just 
off the charts. And and they, I remember they would bring their summer students in and that's all the summer students would do all summer was blog posting. And it took me forever to try and convince the principal in that firm that you know very well that he needed to step out and do video. He had done videos with you before, but what you had done in the past was more of a commercial, more of a traditional studio shot. And then we wanted to get the talk show. So we built out the talk show, which you were the host. Yep. for a while and then then we had the musical hosts which and then it just got to the point where um there was a breakdown with the firm and the firm just decided they weren't going to pursue it any further actually at a point where i felt it was going to make the big turn and it was going to become very popular but unfortunately the host that i liked then was no longer with the firm that would be uh you <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> But you know what? But when you think about that and how it's all changed, I remember talking to um, an influencer, a Canadian by the name of Danny Brown, uh, and he's very well known in as far as in, in certain industries, not necessarily the legal industry. But he and I would debate quite a bit. And then um, uh, Lexblog, which is another company out of the states, which specializes in just what it sounds like they aggregate lawyers' blogs into one place, and it, it was very effective. But I've had heavy discussions with them saying, guys, when I look at your blog posts and I look at who's commenting, it's a circle jerk. You're getting commented from your fellow bloggers. I don't see clients commenting, hey, hey, I I like what you're telling me here. I, I Can I get some advice? So where's the benefit of blogging if the only person that's going to be commenting on it are your peers, right? If the idea of, of content, now this was the whole thing where people that don't fully understand how Google works. And I'm not as very great at it. I'm blessed to have with Ms. Waddell, one of the best organic SEO people in Canada. And she gets it and stays on top of everything and all the changes. But yeah, the shift went from the written word content king to video overtaking it. And video and video algorithms have become more important now to Google and the other search engines, but Google and the new one, you, which is an AI uh, operated one, which I'm currently experimenting with. And I find it quite interesting how it does its results. But, um, you know, so, so we come back to, to legal marketing. It, it's a game. You say and you're and you're right. You're bad. You, you You know, you need to do it. You know, it doesn't take much time. And it's just a, it, it it's a matter of starting with one, you know. Well, I'm going to do one video on I don't know DUI, or I'm going to do one video on speeding, or I'm going to do one video on landlord tenant, right? You know the the old school rules still stand. For a video to be effective, one today you have to get them with your first sentence. So there has to be an attention grab. Two, you go, you have to be perceived to be giving something for nothing. I realize there's a line for lawyers in the legal community that you can't dispense legal advice, but you can provide information that is not advice. And I think for lawyers and paralegals, that's the premise. And then for me, I would say you don't want to just stick to just the dry law stuff. Don't be afraid if you're gonna if you're gonna start a podcast that you end up parsing out in little increments. Like you'll see with this show, you, you'll see the whole show when it's put up, but then you'll see, you'll start to see clips of the show. This is what all the, the, the big YouTubers are doing these days. And, and we use AI to do it for us. So you're not just manually having like you would have to, in the old days, you'd have to manually cut and paste, cut and paste it. Well, this is all done for you. Now the AI seems to recognize, okay, this was a, a good point of conversation. I'm going to pull that one out. Uh, but it's a way of again constantly driving traffic. You know, so you're driving you're driving traffic to your YouTube channel. You're driving traffic to your website. You're driving traffic to your other social media platforms. So I'm glad to see that you get it, and I'm glad to see that I'd like to think you're going to share this knowledge. Oh, I got to turn off the toys. I got too many toys <laughs> going on. It's <laughs> stupid thing. <laughs> I noticed Thank something you. earlier, and I wasn't sure if it was only me seeing it or not. But uh, yeah, it was a thumbs up. I've I, I, they have gestures now on Zoom, and I keep forgetting to turn it off because I have it on just for when I'm doing some other stuff, just to break up the tension. But eh, we'll leave it on for now. Hey, while yeah. I'm at it, before I think of anything else, everybody down below, 
hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Okay, you'll see it at the end of the show. And Mark's information will be on at the end of the show as well. His website, his contact information, his phone number, all that good stuff. So if you need a paralegal anywhere in Southern Ontario, there's the guy you want to talk to. So Mark, just kind of bringing us back home and start to wrap this up. What other ideas and thoughts and views do you have on marketing for paralegals? I think they just need to you know, jump right into the deep end. I don't need to, you know, rip the bandaid off, so to speak, as opposed to just kind of pulling it off slowly. Uh, they just got to get out there and do something, uh, something that they're proud of. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, when we're talking to clients in a consultation, we're trying to provide them enough information that ultimately sells ourselves as their chosen legal representative. Uh, and it's nice for clients to, you know, hear me talk about law, to talk about careless driving, the, you know, the punishments, the potential penalties, the defenses, but how are they going to relate to me on a personal level? How are, they're putting a lot of trust and faith into us as legal professionals and providing legal services and lawyers practicing law. Uh, people have to be comfortable and, and what better way uh, than to do some of these videos, to do some of these podcasts. I mean, I, I, I'm a legal professional, but you see that I have my bass guitars and my old hockey jerseys. Oh, I guess it's it's mirrored uh, over my shoulder. And I mean, right. I, I, I love hockey and I love music. I mean, I can sit here and talk to you all day about hockey. I mean, we've spoken at length about our, our beloved Toronto Maple Leafs, but we won't uh, give yeah. them any any more free marketing than they already have. Um, but it, it's, it's nice to be able to relate to the paralegal that you're putting your faith into. I mean, you're putting all your trust, ultimately, if it comes down to a loss of license, license suspension, uh, or even incarceration, you want you want to present yourself in a way that you're professional, but also that you're a regular human being and that, um, you know, we're here for you. We're not just here for the paycheck. We're not here for the glory of being in court. We're here to provide access uh, to, of justice, access to justice to individuals that uh, you might not be able to afford a lawyer. And my only recommendation for, you know, paralegals that aren't involved in online legal marketing right now is they just need to jump in. They need to start doing it. They need to start recording videos. Uh, you can put them on your website. You can put them on YouTube. You can put them on Facebook. You can put them on TikTok. TikTok's an area that I'm still dabbling with still trying to get into but I do appreciate that it's uh, kind of taken over control. I, I'm old enough that I still remember vines uh before all oh these things came, oh. these things came out that was probably about 12 13 years ago maybe i'm not sure um but i i remember the shorts and and spending a lot of time back then watching it but it, it doesn't have to be three hours long i, I don't want to sit here and, and go to a professional no. development course and that's the thing is that lawyers and paralegals have to take these courses cpd continued professional development courses I, this isn't a continued professional development course. i'm not i'm not here to present any information in a sense that I'm teaching a course. I'm not going to be here for three hours talking to you. I, I, I had a, an interesting case or maybe something interesting came up during a careless driving trial and, you know, the client was acquitted. It's the first time it's come up. It's public record because the trial that happened in trial, why not, you know, do a quick blog post saying something interesting came up at trial. You don't have to reveal the specifics, you know, any names or, or exactly what was said or what wasn't said, but you can say this happened in court and this is how I can now apply it to your upcoming case because this is new uh how are the public going to know that there's new law or something you know uh uh exciting has happened in your area of practice unless you promote it and you you talk about it nobody's literally on the web on, on google you know googling what is new and exciting in the highway traffic act or who, who what was the penalty imposed for so and so it's not until you start to get that promotion through your website through lawyerlocate.ca and some of the third party websites um, that you really start to get a return and, and i think and one thing i want to tell paralegals is everything that they start doing now start doing today it's not going to be an immediate return you know six months to a year for everything that you start to work on that you're happy with and you know is factual and you implement um, you're not going to see immediate returns. You're going to start to see some returns, you know, around three, four months down the road, six months. If you're not seeing return, a little bit of a return on the investment around six to eight months, you might want to revisit your content. Um, but just just don't expect results immediately. Get get going. 
and sit back and 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 hopefully uh, reap the rewards. <laughs> I guess is my final final thought to the paralegal industry. So yeah, you may be familiar with unless you've been living somewhere else, not on social media. You must know who Gary V is. Pretty popular influencer. Yeah, I guess. Uh, self-made millionaire, made his millions by going to garage sales, and he found a niche for toffee cups that he would resell on eBay, and then he ended up making so much money, and then he bought a vineyard. And anyway, uh, I've been lucky enough to see him speak a couple of times. But his basic theme in last year now with uh, all these platforms is if you're not posting in video content 30 posts a week, you're not there. And and he tells people, you know, at his seminars and his his talks, is that steal from the other guy. Who who's doing well? What what influencer that you're looking at is doing really well? Steal it. There's nothing wrong with that. Take their stuff, make it fit your service or product, and do what they're doing. Nothing wrong with that at all. So if you're if you're a paralegal and you're a lawyer and you're trying to figure out this whole you know, legal marketing space and this whole digital uh, social media space, find people that are driving traffic that are, are, you know, people that you can say are trustworthy and they're not just scammy people, but some of the big YouTubers, I mean, Mr. Beast is a good example. I mean, the guy, you cannot fault his numbers. Another one that I always tell people to look at, if you're looking for ideas to learn how to think out of the box, if you've never watched the show, hot ones on youtube go watch it it's the most brilliant talk show that i've seen in 50 years and the guy and that show pulls what would have been c nbc primetime can't pull the 2.5 million viewers he gets per show no so there's a lot to be said for, you know, and I look at the generation that's coming up. So I've got, you know, I have a 42-year-old son and I've got a soon-to-be 18-year-old son. The 18-year-old doesn't watch TV. Well, I can't I can't force him to come upstairs and watch a hockey game. His whole world outside of real life is contained on social media platforms. You know, right now, him and his buddies live on Instagram. That's that's their platform to talk to each other, to share videos of skiing and this, that, and the other thing. It's so different for lawyers. Just, just, just going to interrupt you there. It's, I, yeah, I, yeah. I share a lot of, I mean, my friends that I grew up with, went to high school with, et cetera, we do a lot of our communication on Instagram. So it's nice to hear that, you know, the young lads are still, I, you know, I'm, I'm still young and hip for the most part using <laughs> IG. Unless, you know, IG is not cool and they just don't want to text each other and that way they just use IG, then maybe I'm, I'm, I'm little too old but uh it's, it's nice to hear that ig is still being used and i'm not that yeah, i'll tell you i'll tell you my 18 year old uh was on tiktok for a while and then he got off it and i still i haven't been able to get an answer as to why he left tiktok so because i keep sending him different tiktoks that i see that i think he, he's interested. so i'm not on tiktok anymore dad don't send them to me so oh, yeah. but yeah, i can't find out why Anyway, we've run through a lot of stuff today, Mark. And I got to tell you, first, I got to thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. I hope uh, we can get you back again in the future and we'll Certainly. talk some Certainly. more about legal marketing, maybe some more about what your experiences are. Um, this has been our, our second show, season one. We're just starting out. If you have any suggestions or comments, please, if you're watching, comment. Let me know what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right. Appreciate all that. If you need a referral uh, for any type of legal matter in Canada, you can get that for free at lawyerlocate.ca. Uh, just uh, on the front page, upper right-hand side, there's a bot red box that says, get me a free referral. Just click on that. A form comes up. You briefly describe your legal matter and we'll process it out to lawyers or paralegals in your geographic area in the area of law you're looking for. They in turn will contact you. It's been a great show, folks. I really enjoy doing this. Hopefully, I'll get better as we go along. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't steal a line from one of the other shows I produce, Fire Away. If you think you have digital marketing and social media problems, you probably do. If you need some help, reach out to us at lawyerlocate.ca, digitalmspace.ca, or legaltube.ca, and we'll be able to help you and give you some good ideas as to how to get your, your social media up and running properly and how to... Uh, market your uh, your practice or your le or your paralegal business that's all we got for today folks have a great day be back next month thanks for joining us for this episode of the legal tube podcast ready to take your legal marketing to the next level 
Our show delivers expert insights and practical advice to help you succeed in today's competitive legal landscape. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this podcast is for you. For more information, check out lawyerlocate.ca. And if you have any questions, get in touch with us. Thanks for listening.